What's up investors and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Redbox, Nasdaq ticker or DBX. This penny stock is about to go insane and could be the biggest short squeeze of 2022. Redbox stock has already gained over 150% in the past month, but considering just how much this stock is being shorted, I believe that this is just the beginning of what might be a 10x or more. But be under no illusions, there is a reason why this stock is being so heavily shorted and in this video I will explain everything that you need to know that should help you learn how to get in and out of this short squeeze play. In the past week there has been a lot of social media hype around this stock too and some of it is just straight up lies. So in this video I will shed some light on the real facts that you need to be aware of. This penny stock could easily 2x within days and I feel that this could definitely be a penny stock to buy in May. If you do like this video, can I ask you to smash the like button? I'm aiming to get 300 likes on this video, help me achieve that goal. It literally costs you nothing but it helps me out so much. I tweeted about Redbox on Wednesday and this went on to gain over 75% in the next 48 hours. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter to stay up to date. And remember to turn on notifications so you never miss a video with the potential to make you money. I want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Now let's get into it with a quick overview of the company and the investors presentation. For anyone that is unfamiliar with Redbox as a company, Redbox is a once leading entertainment company that gives consumers access to a large variety of content across digital and physical media. Redbox is known for their bright red DVD rental kiosks that tend to be placed in busy retail locations to offer a selection of DVDs that can be rented for a few dollars. The company also operates a growing digital stream service that provides paid movies from Hollywood studios and hundreds of content partners, as well as over 130 channels of free ad supported streaming television. Redbox was founded 20 years ago and was once the low cost competition to video rental stores like Blockbuster, adding thousands of new kiosks each year. But now Redbox finds itself on the other side of innovation, replaced by streaming services and on demand digital rental. After growing rapidly for several years, Redbox slowly seen its market decline as the likes of Netflix or Amazon Prime started to grow rapidly. But Redbox does still have about 40,000 kiosks throughout the United States. In fact, when we look at the investors presentation, they estimate that 90% of all Americans are within a 5 minute drive of a kiosk, which does provide huge exposure that the company can take advantage of. One of these ways to take advantage is the digital out of home ad opportunity with 4000 digital video screens being installed across retail placements to enhance in store marketing capabilities. With the opportunity to expand more broadly across kiosk network and they estimate this to provide a $70 million potential annual revenue opportunity. But it appears that the main focus for Redbox right now is the shift from video rentals through their kiosks over to subscription video on demand. By converting a small percentage of existing customers to consistent multi-product users could lead to 800 million to over 1 billion in annual revenues from this alone. For comparisons, Netflix, who recently published their quarterly earnings report, reported nearly $8 billion in revenue for a three month period. And this was considered a terrible quarter with the stock tanking about 50% in April. Now Redbox is no Netflix. But then again, 12 years ago, neither was Netflix. 12 years ago, Redbox was the established company that looked to have a huge future, especially after Blockbuster closed up and other rental stores followed suit. But it was Netflix that made the most of technology and now it is up to Redbox trying to save itself. But the fact remains, that if Redbox can successfully convert the other business into a globally recognized subscription video on demand service, then today's valuation of just $270 million could seem like pennies. Now, how many times have you heard people refer to some penny stocks as this stock is like buying Amazon or buying Google or Tesla when it was only a few dollars? Well, right now, buying Redbox could literally be like buying Netflix when it was only a few dollars. But there are some caveats to this, some very, very big ones. To explain this, this stock went public late last year through a reverse merger with the SPAC, Seaport Global Acquisition Corp. And despite initially going as high as $27, RDBX stock began to tumble, dropping as low as $1.61 last month, 
Now I tweeted about this a few days ago when the stock was still just $3, that this stock could make another 100% gain easy. Right now RDBX stock has got a growing army of followers. And unlike some of the meme stock squeezes or pumps or whatever you want to call them over the past few months, this company actually has got true meme stock potential. Now that is not me trying to discredit the actual business, but this does have a lot of similarities to GME stock back in 2020. In the long term, Redbox might be able to build back up to a successful company, but right now, this is a short squeeze play, and for the first time in a long time, this is a short squeeze where the numbers do actually add up. First of all, this stock is heavily shorted, and that is not really surprising when you see the company's financials, so stick around for when I look at these in a moment. The financials are an extremely important part of the overall investment look at this stock, even if you were just interested in the short term squeeze play. Understanding a company's financial statements will help you understand whether to hold or to sell when a stock starts to drop again. Another major factor here is that there is actually a very small number of shares overall and a small free float. So look at this post over on Reddit. This was from two days ago by Everything Crypto 2018. 52% of the free float is short. The average borrow cost is 320%. 75% of the free float is on loan. 100% utilization and a tiny free float of only 2.7 million. And this data has been taken from Ortex.com. But he also states here the five reasons why this is far and away the best squeeze play on the market. So number one, the shares are cheap, although they've gone up a bit since this post, but there are no options. So this can't be easily manipulated as some of the other squeeze plays people are talking about. Number two, this is absolutely critical for people to understand. The free float is only 2.7 million. The main reason most squeezes don't end up coming to fruition is because the float is too large. This float is tiny. For comparisons, the float of Aterian is 26.2 million. Nothing against ATR stock, just trying to illustrate how tiny the red box float really is. Think about it, 52% of 2.7 million is short, which means there are only 1.3 freely traceable shares. All retail has to do is buy the float, which sounds crazy, but it's absolutely doable in this case. It's only a million shares. If 5,000 people were to buy 200 shares each, the entire free float will have been bought. Now this really does have so many similarities to GME stock two years ago. And I feel that although Redbox has gone from the lows of 160 up to 590, I think that this is still just the beginning. Take a look over at StockTwits for example. I remember when the message volume from Mullen stock was less than a few hundred a day. Then at its peak, it went up to over 100,000. Now I'm not comparing Mullen to Redbox as companies. These are not on the same level at all. That was simply a stock that was hyped up by people for various reasons that I won't get into here. I have made videos about Mullen where I've explained my thought process on that stock. I just want to illustrate just how early we are right now in Redbox. This stock has been gaining day after day now for about two weeks, but had largely went under the radar. It was only on Friday when the stock gained over 69% that everyone started to take real notice. But look at this, the message volume here is still only about 6,000. A lot of people are still not aware of this stock. And think of the amount of gains this stock has already seen with very little interest. I really do think that this could explode next week as the level of interest dramatically increases. RDBX stock is currently number three on the most active list and number one on the new watchers list. And the stock was also trending on Friday and will be trending again on Monday. So before we look at the charts, let's take a look at the most recent earnings report. And this should help everyone to understand the risks involved here if you are considering the long hold, but should also show you exactly how this stock has ended up being so heavily shorted in the first place. Looking at the company's balance sheet, we can see that they have total assets of $378 million and total liabilities of $440 million. This means that Redbox is in negative equity to the value of $62 million. To make matters worse, long-term debt is by far the largest liability, while Goodwill is recorded as the biggest asset. Now, if you follow this channel, you will know that I hate to see Goodwill being stated as one of a company's major assets. 
Goodwill is not a real asset. Goodwill is basically the opposite of a bargain purchase. Where an asset is bought for below its fair value, the difference must be recorded somewhere. The same goes when an asset is purchased for above its fair value. In this case, the difference is goodwill and gets recorded in the non-current assets. My problem with goodwill is that it is not tangible, it is not real. This $147 million could simply be written down as an impairment in the very next earnings report. So I tend to remove goodwill from my calculations when analyzing companies. This would leave total assets of $230 million compared to total liabilities of $440 million. To put this simply, this is a terrible balance sheet. Current liabilities are also two times current assets, and the fact that they have only $18 million in cash is very worrying for RDBX stock. This coupled with the fact that revenues have been dropping dramatically year over year, down 66% from $800 million in 2019 down to $280 million in 2021. This is made even worse because costs have not even halved. What was once a profitable business is now a huge loss maker. Losses of over $140 million for 2021. So this raises a huge going concern issue for this company. And we can see here in the notes to the accounts just how bad things really are. In January, Redbox borrowed the remaining availability under its revolving credit facility. And on the 1st of April 2022, the company announced a reduction in force of 150 employees which should lead to a reduction in cost of 13 million, but this is only a fraction of what is needed. And management have highlighted the level of the problems that they are facing. There is substantial doubt about our ability to continue as a going concern, and this could materially impact our ability to obtain capital financing and the value of our common stock. If we cannot continue as a going concern, our stockholders would most likely lose all or most of their investment in us and holders of our indebtedness may also suffer material losses on their investments. So make no mistake about this, I really cannot state this strongly enough. Anyone who is considering investing in this company for the long term, this is extremely high risk. Extremely high risk and not a good risk to reward ratio. Now this is not financial advice in any way, do what you want. But I can only see two things happening here. Either Redbox do not do an equity offering and they go bankrupt within the next 18 months, or once the share price peaks on its current run, we will probably get an announcement that management will dilute shareholders. Just yesterday, it was disclosed that Redbox gets access to $50 million in additional financing as part of a restructured agreement with HPS Investment Partners. This will do very little in the long term, considering the level of losses being made, but this could help with the short squeeze scenario. Looking at the charts, we can see that the stock went public back here in November, and then the steady decline that the stock made before bottoming out in February and March. And looking closer, we can see just how much the stock has risen over the past 10 days, from less than $2 on April 20th to over $6 on Friday. I do expect that this stock will run strong again next week, and I would not be surprised to see this break $10 within a few days. However, but if this does begin to drop, I would not be surprised to see this drop heavily. After all, there is a reason why this is so heavily shorted. There is a reason every analyst covering the stock have all slashed the ratings and price targets recently. The most recent of these being Canaccord, dropping their price target from $16 to just $3. Ironically, the day that they slashed their price target was also the day that the stock began to rally hard. So guys, what do you think of Redbox? Will you be investing in this stock either in the short squeeze or for long term potential? Drop a comment and let me know what you think of this company and if you enjoyed my video. I would greatly appreciate if you could smash the like button and hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and I'll catch you in the next video.